So let's imagine we're given two vectors, E and C. And the purpose of the game is to do two things. I'm going to do it in steps. First is to obtain whoa, the resulting vector of A and C. And then the second purpose of the game is to obtain the equivalent vector, which is the vector needed such that the sum of this vector E and the given vectors A and C will reach equilibrium, which means that as I add those three vectors, I will go back to the original position. OK? OK, so let's start with the easy part. Let's calculate the resultant vector, which is nothing else than the sum of A and C. We're given vector A and C in terms of management direction, so let's express those two vectors in terms of component notation. So vector A. Anybody can give me the functional form of the component notation version of vector A. Using the fact that fluid is defined from the positive x going counterclockwise, so that should make our life easier. Excellent. Yep. Three cosine and three sine. Super. Let's make sure that we are careful about the notation. This one is the I, and the other one is a J. If we calculate cosine of 30, we have square of 3 over 2. 3, square of 3 over 2. And sine of 30 is 1 half, 3 half. Cool. So that took us 5 seconds. Let's do the same thing with C. Could you tell me first the angle that defines C in terms of the positive x going counterclockwise? Once we know this angle, then the rest will be easy. Excellent. 270. So the x is cosine, the y is sine. Perfect. So we have magnitude. plus 4 sine 2 sevenths. Then uh, cosine 2 seventy is 0, so 4 times 0 is 0. And just for completeness, I will write 0i. But you don't have to, just to simplify my work afterwards. Sine of minus 2 seventy is minus 1. Whoops. Therefore, minus. Four. Okay. If we're looking for the resultant vector, which is a plus c, then all I have to do is add those two, add all the j's together, all uh, uh, and add all the i's together. So r will be three square of three over two plus three half is. 1.5 minus 4. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, 8, 5, 5 half. With a negative sign. And I hope I did it right. If not, let me know. That should be 2.5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay? So we know uh, the component of the vector R. From here, we can easily compute the magnitude of R. R magnitude, which is also defined as just R, is just 9 times 3, that's 27 fourth, plus the square of the other one, which is 25 fourth, to the square root A, whatever that is. Okay, and for the angle, theta C, I know I just need to take the tangent of minus 5 half. Let's not forget the negative sign. And 3 square of 3 over 2. And here we have to be careful. We know that the uh, negative sign is on a J. Therefore, the vector R is going to be on the fourth quadrant. Okay? 
and then we can check uh, the magnitude of each. This is 2.5. This is, wait, uh, square of 3 is 1.7 times 3. I have no idea. 5.1 divided by 2. So a little more than 2.5. So the x is a little bit bigger than 2.5 which tells us that if, for example, we get the calculator and tells us this number is minus 46, then we know that this angle is this one. Oops, this one. Yeah, this one. And if the value that we get is 32, then we know it's this one. Oh, the question, square of what numbers? This one square root of 27 over 4 plus 25 over 4. 27 over 4 was obtained by taking the square of the x component. So 3 square of 3 ends up with 9 times 3, which is 27. Square of 2 is 4. And then as we square minus 5 half, we end up with 25 4. Does that answer your question, Kerry? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm sorry. R, by definition, is Rx squared plus Ry squared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I don't have any calculator. <laughs> I never had a calculator. I don't know how to use them, uh, and I'm lazy. Uh, so I usually keep everything in terms of fraction uh, when I do calculations. Um, for you, you decide whatever whatever is the uses for you. If you don't mind keeping everything analytically and in terms of fraction, keep everything into the fraction. If you have a calculator that you like to use and you're fast at it, you know, put some numbers, whatever you want. Okay. Usually in this class, I don't care about numbers. To be honest, uh, many of the problems that I would ask you are analytical. Uh, and I really don't care either about significant figures. So if the answer is 5.2 and you're in 5.1 or 5.3, good enough for me. The difference might just be really round up there. So as long as you're in the right ballpark, uh, it's okay. I usually, okay, okay, you're not stay away from them. I usually give points on the method that you're using. So whenever you're going to be showing me through tests your understanding, I want you to show me every step of the way. This is how I'm going to grade the questions, by looking at your reasoning. Now, if you need a final answer, you go by plugging the numbers in the calculator. Don't worry about this. I would never take points for that, unless it's so blatant that it's embarrassing, but usually it doesn't happen. I, you, I will take out points if the method that you're using is incorrect, even though your answer might be correct. So be ready for this. If you bump into the right answer at the end, even though the whole reason is completely wrong, you ain't going to get any points for this uh, problem. I only care about the method and the way that you use in order to reach the final answer. Exactly. Well, as, as you're going to be an engineer and you're going to be working in the factory or a company, you're always going to have the computers, and you're always going to have plenty of time to check and check your calculation. And you're going to be working in groups, so everybody's going to check. You don't have to worry about this. So I really only care about your understanding of the methods and the concept, not so much the numbers. But be careful. Don't neglect this aspect of physics or engineering uh, either, because that's my philosophy. But maybe in 272, uh, the rules of the games are going to be much different. I mean, they might be, depending on the structure. So, I mean, try to at least, you know, get you know, reasonable numbers uh, in any case. Don't just blow it off, because next semester you may have problems. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't care. Okay, so everybody's okay with uh, the calculation of the resultant vector, which is the sum of AMC. If not, let me know. All right, something is good. So now I'm looking for E. So if I'm going to plot R, obviously R is going to be somewhere around here. Oh yeah, what the heck was B for? I don't know, sorry. And now if I'm looking for the equilibrium vector, then I got two options. I know that the equilibrium vector is defined as if I take the equilibrium and I add all the other vectors given to me 
and end up with zero. Vector. Because again, left hand side is a vector, right hand side will be a vector. So from this definition of the equilibrium vector, I can solve for E, as we did before, and I realize that E is nothing else than A plus C. But then I realize that A, yo, A plus C is nothing else but R. So really, I can use the relationship between the equilibrium and the resultant. This mathematically tells me two things, that the magnitude of E is equal to the magnitude of R, and that the direction of E is equal to the direction of R plus or minus 180 degrees. So by using this, I can just save time, not having to recalculate A and C like I just did, but just use the results. I can just grab R, change all the sign, and E would be minus 3 square of 3 over 2, I plus 5 half J. My I is negative, therefore, and my J is positive, therefore, it's the second quadrant. And I know from this relationship that the angle between two is 180 degree. So whatever angle I obtained here, I just need to either add, and I'm going to pick up this angle, or minus, I'm going to pick up the other angle in order to get theta E. Okay, so usually once you find one, you can easily find the other one uh, very quickly. Okay? Questions on this? Okay, let's do one more, another quickie. How did you get the angle? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't. I was too lazy again. This is how you get it. For the angle of C, you take the Y component, you divide it by the X component, you take the R tangent. And you use the same rules by checking the sign and the magnitude to figure out which angle it is. For the direction of the equilibrium, I know that this is telling me that the relationship between both angles is just a difference of 180 degrees. Because if R is in one direction, you know that the E is in the opposite direction with the same length. So the angle between the two is always 180 degrees. Okay, any other questions?